palpation of the ankle. And for the ankle, we want to palpate on the lateral side, the lateral malleolus and the shaft of the fibula, okay? Making sure to go all the way up to the head of the fibula right here, right? And then on the front, on the anterior, we have the tibial shaft, this right here, okay? And on the medial side, I'm not sure how the switching lights, can you sign that off? On the medial side, you have the medial malleolus. So those are your only um, bony landmarks for the ankle. And then we want to start with our uh, muscles. So your soft tissue um, is difficult for the, much more difficult for the um, ankle and lower leg than it was for the foot because now we're going to palpate the muscles of the lower leg. Whenever possible, you're going to palpate the uh, proximal and distal attachment as well as the as well as the tendon. Okay. So if I um, get Taylor to go ahead, remember we started with our toes and our um, foot palpation. So if I ask him to pull that great toe up and I give some resistance, here's the tendon of extensor hallucis longus. It crosses the joint line right here. You can go ahead and relax. And the muscle belly is right in here, okay? So one thing that we're doing when we're doing this palpation, you guys have seen me palpate a couple times now. I'm pushing pretty hard in there to see if the patient experiences any pain. I'm also judging the tightness of the muscle to see if there's any crepitus in there, checking for any palpable deformity. So can I feel anything that feels weird in there? Um, but again, I'm checking back with the patient to make sure about whether or not me touching it actually hurts. Okay. And then go ahead and pull your toes up again. So let's look for extensor digitorum longus. When I give him some resistance, here's his tendons here. All right. Remember where you can't see the tendon very well is a retinaculum. And the extensor digitorum tendon crosses the ankle joint. You can relax right here. Okay. Here's my shaft of the tibia right here. So extensor dig, the muscle belly is right in here. Okay. Now I know where these are, but I could ask Taylor to go ahead and keep those toes up like that and give him some resistance, and now I can really feel it. Okay, now I can feel the tension in the muscle. Okay, again, asking the patient if he feels any pain with that, crepitus, deformity, increased skin temperature, all those things. Um, now we can do anterior tibialis, so if you pull your foot up and turn it in, okay. Here's the anterior tibialis tendon, and on um, you know young and healthy people like you guys, you're gonna find that's a really big tendon, it's very obvious where it attaches. So the proximal attachment is on the uh, base of the first metatarsal, first cuneiform, and you're gonna follow that up. And we learned the other day, I think we could see it pretty easily, that anterior tibialis muscle belly right in this area, so it's on the upper part of the lower leg, okay? So the tendon is here, and the muscle belly is here. Moving on to the perineals, so I'm asking you to put, uh, point your foot down and turn it out, down and out, good. Now I'm gonna give you a little bit of resistance there so that I can visualize where that tendon is. So we have a perineal attachment to the base of the fifth metatarsal. That would be the tendon of the peroneus uh, brevis and peroneus tertius. So the perineal tendon wraps around um, on the calcaneus. Remember we, on the foot we talked about where the perineal tubercle is? Okay, so let me stop for a second. He's done a plantar flex and turn out, and you can see the tendon right here. And where it passes right here is the uh, perineal tubercle on the calcaneus. So here's the attachment point for peroneus longus, peroneus tertius. Mean, Pronus brevis and pronus tertius. So you palpate from the base of the fifth, this common perineal tendon, and then up here, your uh, pronus uh, brevis is gonna be basically this long, so right in this, it's overlying the fibula, and there is the uh, muscle belly there, and then higher up at the head of the fibula and down is gonna be the pronus longus. So what I was doing is right in this area is gonna be the belly of pronus brevis, and up in this area here, it's gonna be the belly for pronus longus. Um, eventually what you're going to have to do, not in this class, but as you move on in athletic training, you're going to be doing this palpation, the patient's going to come in and say, so you're not going to do the palpation, but the patient's going to come in and say, you know what, my knee is killing me, I don't know what's going on. And so you're going to palpate over that head of the fibula, and they're like, yeah, that's where the pain is. Well, the head of the fibula, it's really not the knee, okay, it's not the, it's not any, like here's your LCL ligament at the knee, that's not what the patient is complaining of. And if this patient happens to be a runner and there happens to have been a marathon that they ran in two days ago and they're complaining of knee pain but it hurts right here, you're gonna be like, oh well, right in this area is my anterior tibialis, right in this area is my peroneus uh, longus, and both of those worked really hard in the marathon to control my patient's foot, so we're probably dealing more with the lower leg muscle than we are with the knee, okay? So this is the clinical significance that you're striving for but right now, all you're trying to do is locate those structures. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, so soft tissue. We have now done the perineals on the lateral side. We've done the anterior structures. 
and I'll have you drop this leg down for the camera. We'll do the things on the medial side. So you're going to go back to the medial malleolus and go slightly up onto the shaft of the tibia. And right where my finger is there, there's going to be Tom, Dick, and Harry, which stands for tibialis posterior. So for, to see the tibialis posterior tendon, the patient plantar flexes and inverts, and on Taylor it pops right out. Okay, so we can see it right there. And um, tibialis posterior is in what compartment? Thank you, deep posterior. So the muscle belly for tibialis posterior is not gonna be palpable. So you're gonna find that tendon, okay? So we cannot palpate the muscle belly or the proximal attachment. Can we palpate the distal? Kind of, where is it? On the bottom of the foot, right? But what's on the bottom of the foot? Oh, there's the plantar fascia, okay? Um, some other sort of intrinsic muscles. Nope, we really can't. You could get close. So when you're palpating the posterior tibialis, then all I'm expecting you to do is to put that patient into plantar flexion inversion so that you can find that tendon and palpate it up just beyond, uh, just above the medial malleolus, and that's it. Okay. Also located in this area is flexor digitorum. So feel free to have your patient go ahead and curl their toes. So curl your toes. Okay. And when they do that, see Taylor's got a nice strong foot because I can see his tendon sticking out right here. All right, that'll let you know, okay, relax for a second. See if you can just curl your great toe. Can you? Okay, and I can feel it. Remember, when they're moving and you have your hand in the you can feel the tendon get tighter. So his flexor digitorum tendon is back here, or um, flexor halicus tendon is back here, and the flexor digitorum. So Tom, Dick, and Harry, tibialis posterior, flexor digitorum longus, and the Harry's flexor halicus longus. Okay, and the posterior tibial pulse, posterior tibial artery pulse is right there. That looks nice and healthy. Okay. All right, so what I went over, I was so excited to get to the muscles, I forgot to do the ligaments. All right, so where I was, by the way, for you guys, on the medial malleolus right here, when we want to see tip post, point and turn in. Okay, so here's the tibialis posterior tendon. It goes underneath the foot right here, and it goes deep into the deep posterior compartment right here. Also in this area, I'll have him go ahead and curl his toes. Okay, and I can see where it gets a little more tense in here now. Flexor digitorum and flexor halicus are both right here. Posterior tibial artery right here. Okay. All right. So what I was in a hurry and skipped over was the ligaments. So ligaments of the ankle. Um, one thing that was asked on the discussion board was, um, why is the anterior talofibular ligament so much weaker than, say, the medial or the, the other lateral ligaments or the medial um, the deltoid ligament on the medial side? Okay. And one of the reasons is that that daggone talus has to move in that triplanar way. So it's got to go into plantar flexion, dorsiflexion. It has to adduct toward the midline, abduct away from the midline, okay? And it also has to invert and evert on this plane like this. So because there has to be so much motion of the talus, then your ATF has to be relatively loose, okay? To allow for that motion. So that's one reason. Um, so your anterior talofibular ligament from the fibula, um, lateral malleolus rather, Remember, that has a horizontal orientation onto the talus right here. So here's my anterior talofib, and my posterior talofib is back here, and your calcaneofib is back here, okay? From the uh, fibula to the calcaneus, a little bit higher, so up on the shaft, the anterior tib fib and the posterior tib fib ligaments, okay? Another question that was asked is, how are you supposed to know when you're on the ligament and when you're on a bone? Remember, we really can't feel them all that well. There are a couple exceptions, like you can feel the MCL. But in these little ligaments in the ankle, it's much more difficult, okay? All right, so we'll switch for the camera. Um, all you need to do on your palpations on the test is identify the medial, um, on the medial side is to identify the deltoid ligament. So you can palpate onto the uh, medial malleolus, right? Down to the navicular and to the um, calcaneus, okay? So all of these ligaments, or all this area in here is the deltoid ligament. So I'll show you guys what that looks like. So on the medial side, down in this area here. All right, um, Taylor, what did I miss? Mm -hmm. Sorry, and oh, I did. All right. Um, your soleus and gastroc muscles are on the posterior. That's the one compartment that I didn't do, so you can relax for a second. Keep in mind that um, here's your shaft, uh, again, your crest of your tibia. And when you go to the medial side of that, you feel this broad bone. And as soon as you get off the bone and onto soft tissue, that's going to be your soleus and gastroc complex. And right next to the bone, 
in here, okay, so right in here, there's going to be some tissue of the soleus, and then it, you can easily see the gastrocnemius right here. So when you're palpating them, you're going to identify that down here is the dome of the calcaneus where the Achilles tendon attaches, and the Achilles tendon um, at the calcaneus is the distal attachment for both gastroc and soleus. So you're going to say these words when you're doing the practical. You're going to palpate that Achilles tendon, okay? And then the shaft, or the, sorry, the, the uh, muscle belly for soleus is right in here. You could also palpate that on the lateral side. Okay, so it's going to be that tissue. Here's the fibula right here. It's going to be just on the other side of the fibula. Like that. It's going to be some of the tissue of the soleus. And then, of course, your gastrocnemius. The two heads are here. And we palpated the distal attachment. The proximal attachment is above the knee. Okay, and right on those condyles. It's not as easy. Can you bend your knees in? It's easier to palpate, yeah, when the knee's bent. So right up in here would be the attachment to the gastrocnemius. Okay, you want to palpate that muscle belly thoroughly. Again, point tenderness, crepitus. Uh, point tender means if I touch it and it hurts. That's what we would describe point tenderness. Increase skin temperature, increase muscle tone.